a lot of rappers still it seems like want to be Tupac. They want to have his popularity. They want people to love them like they everyone loves him. But why do you think no one's succeeding? <laughs> well, because I, this is what they fail to realize about Tupac. In order for them to be Tupac, they would have to die before they peaked. Right before they peaked, they would have to die. So if you don't like, you don't die. You, you can't do it. Bottom line, if you don't go die. You're not gonna be the next two five, cause it ain't gonna be the next two five. Straight up. Hey, one love to that nigga D'Angelo. Nigga, this be bad in the motherfucker, you know. Ain't no disrespect they playing, but a motherfucker love this beat so much. <laughs> we had to skip to it. Yo, YouTube, what up? It's your homie Gab, I'm in the building, and this is Machiavelli Media. D'Angelo, my lady. What an awesome song. D'Angelo hit the scene like a comet. His sound was completely unique. It was 1995, and his first single, Brown Sugar, was unique because it had like metaphors to it. You know, he was talking about weed, but it made you feel like he was talking about a female, how he described his love for brown sugar. A lot of people was really rocking with D'Angelo. You know, the nigga had the cornrows, stugged out, playing the piano with the tube like Roger Troutman on the side of his mouth. And he was fresh. Sound was dope. And whether you were R&B or hip hop, you had a respect and appreciation for what D'Angelo was doing. Tupac and the Outlaws took notice. I got confirmation from one of the Outlaws that Pac used to love D'Angelo's music big time. Used to like to smoke and drink to it. And they would listen to it. And one night in the studio, they decided to put a verse on it. Now, at the time, the Outlaws wasn't the Outlaws. They were dramacidal. I don't know who produced it, but I'm assuming it was Johnny J. And the young lady singing the hook was none other than the late, great Jewel. The song was dope. When I first heard it, it was on one of the bootleg Machiavelli's. They got leaked at the Tupac's demise. Didn't really stand out to me, but I just thought it was dope. You know, um, I would later get confirmation from this same member of the Outlaws that Tupac actually reached out to D'Angelo. I don't know, was it to get D'Angelo to be on one of his up and coming albums? Or was he reaching out to D'Angelo to be featured on a remix to my lady? But, yes, that did happen. It was amazing to me to hear Pac give D'Angelo his props because Tupac wasn't no hater. You know, a lot of rappers would just use your shit or, you know, jump on your beat and not give you your credit back then. They even do that to this day. Do their own version of somebody else's material without paying respect to the original artist. Pac wasn't like that. Pac said, D'Angelo, we love your shit so much, we had to spit to it. <laughs> That's real. We love it so much, we gotta, we gotta do something with this motherfucker. Yeah. That's respect. And I'm sure D'Angelo appreciated that as well. Game recognized game all day. Real recognize real. Yo, homeboy, I like your shit. Oh, yeah, that's what's up. Hey, I like yours too. That's work. In my estimation, a Tupac and D'Angelo collabo would have eventually happened. Who knows what happened at the time, what was going on. You know, anything could have happened. They kept that from happening. 
If you know what I mean. You know, Pac doing his own thing to it. You can't fade me. A lot of people don't know this. But Tupac was a huge R&B head. Biggie was too, though. So was Nas and, you know, I'm sure quite a few other rappers. They love R&B music. I know I do. Especially older R&B. Sometimes, you know, Pop would want to listen to some R&B, some slow jams, and Suge would be looking at Pac like he was crazy. <laughs> I'm sure Suge probably wondered why Tupac wanted to deal with D'Angelo. Suge wanted to do everything internally. You know, we got Nate Doug, we got Danny Boy, we got Joel, we got this one, we got that one. Pac was like, nah. I fuck with them too. But I want to get at D'Angelo. Because it was a different ingredient. And you know, artists know what they want. Artists have a vision, how they want this stuff to go, how they want it to flow, how they want it to sound. And sometimes people around them can't see that. You know, you can't get inside the mind of an artist. You got to let them do what they do. And, you know, Tupac was really feeling my lady. My lady was dope for a lot of reasons. I mean, he was shouting his woman out. You know, you hear so many times the guy rapping by himself or singing by himself. He fly, he this, he that. But my lady, he was giving tribute to his lady. He said, everybody want to rob me of my girl. People treat me so cold. Everybody want my lady. You know, it wasn't about him. It was about him paying respect to the woman in his life. And, you know, most real G's feel the same way about the young lady that they kicking it with. If she's of any worth. Can't feel like that about everybody, but if you got one, you got one. And when you know, you know. But anyway, Tupac did his thing. They sampled D'Angelo's My Lady. They turned it into You Can't Fade Me. And it was dope. Dope original song by D'Angelo. Dope Tupac rendition by Machiavelli the Don. And here's a dope video from your homie Gab looking back at it. But anyway, here's a time capsule. Something that happened that rarely gets talked about. Tupac admiring D'Angelo's work, doing his own rendition of it, and giving D'Angelo his props. Hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to sub to the channel. This is Machiavelli Media. It's been a pleasure as always. I'm your homie Gab. I'm signing off. I'm about to hit y'all with the peace.